For today's video, I'm going to go over a project that I recently completed, which is rebedding my chain plates. So when you go online and you know watch YouTube videos, you'll see a lot of different recommendations on how to rebed deck hardware. So you'll see everything from drilling holes through the deck and putting some butyl tape and then tighten them down to you know the fillet with epoxy, use the camphor or countersink bits um, to create a channel, redrill the holes. Uh, I even saw one guy that basically put epoxy around the screws and then back the screw back out and he said that it created a, um, a channel that was threaded so that it would have a tighter seal. Um, so I didn't do a lot of that stuff and there's one reason why and that's because the precision boats have a PVC core. So there's no wood core in the precision boats decks. And so normally when you're worried about water intrusion, you're worried about the water going through the deck past the fiberglass and then getting into that center piece of core that is wood and rotting that wood. And a lot of that of course happens where you can't see it. So it's hidden damage that's occurring to your boat. Um, and so in the precision boats, we have a PVC core. And so typically the damage you see from water intrusion is Staining, staining in the headliner. Stain headliner is usually your first sign or drips of water, which was what I saw in my case. And so I was getting little drips of water um, below the chain plate and also near one of the stanchions. And so I actually rebedded both of those, the stanchion and the port side uh, chain plate. And so this video is gonna go over what I did for the chain plate. So this thing is loose, it wiggles, um, and I've been getting a little bit of water, uh, usually just in the morning. Uh, inside the cabin and it's you know, it's just a couple drops that end up on the cushions um, But you know, it's just gonna get worse and worse All right, so this is the back side of the chain plate and I've already taken off uh, The nuts and the little backing plate that was on there and then it has these little covers um, So I've taken all that off. So I guess there's uh, two options here I can pull on it from the top or bang on it from the bottom, but I think I think I'm going to try pulling on it from the top very gently first just so I can see if the fiberglass up top is separating anywhere or anything like that. Um, but if that doesn't work then I'll get a little wood block and start banging on it with a mallet. See how this goes. So it looks like um, they misdrilled the original hole and re-drilled it. And so, I mean, they did a good job of sealing it up, I guess, but after 10, 11, 12, 12, <laughs> after 12 years, I guess it just couldn't do it anymore.
So as soon as I disassembled the chain plate, I immediately saw an issue, and that is that the holes um, that the chain plate were, was mounted in were elongated. Um, and so really what you want is you want the hole to be pretty tight um, to the bolt. And so I had these big elongated holes and they were just filled with a 3M 4200 type of sealant. I don't know exactly what precision you used um, when they originally uh, installed them, but you know, the, the 4200 types of sealants are kind of rubbery and so they flex a lot. And so I'm pretty sure that what happened was that the stress on the chain plate broke the seal at the deck. And then once that happened, um, you know, the chain plate was kind of wiggling a little bit. Um, so the approach I took was to clean out the holes, um, fill them with epoxy, which I use JB Weld, a uh, two-part epoxy, and then drill, drill through the epoxy with new holes. Now, I did not do the countersink or camphor bit um, type repair, um, which basically creates like a wedge shape at the top where it meets the deck. Um, and there's a couple ideas behind doing that. One is to prevent um, any cracking of the fiberglass. But again, I had elongated holes, so the fiberglass was pretty far from where the holes were. Um, so I didn't really need to create that channel because you know, there was plenty of separation with the fiberglass deck. Um, the second reason I've seen online for creating that kind of wedge shape at the top of the hole um, using the countersink bit is to create a channel. So if water gets through the bedding on the deck um, and then gets under there, the, the theory is that instead of it going between the deck and the epoxy, it'll force it to follow that kind of wedge, create a drain, and then go along the bolt. And then you'll see it dripping inside, um, inside the cabin. And so that prevents, theoretically, the water from going down the epoxy and then going into the wooden decks. Um, but again, the Precision 18 has PVC deck, which doesn't rot. Um, so I didn't see the need to, to use the camphor bit or the countersink uh, method. All right, so what I'm doing here is on the inside of the chain plate holes. So there's this um, backing plate, and then there's another plate that goes on the inside as well. And so I want those holes to match up perfectly. And, you know, a lot of people just go, oh, epoxy in the holes and then drill new holes. But because I haven't taken this plate out and the one above, um, there's a very definite spot where it kind of goes, I want those holes to match up. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use these stir straws as kind of a guide. So I'm going to put these in the holes, line them up perfectly, um, and then put the epoxy in and let it harden around the straw. And then the straw will become the guide for my drill bit. And so um, what I'm doing is I'm wrapping the ends with masking tape to fill in the hole. Um, and that way the epoxy won't drip out the bottom. And then I'm going to tape them in place and then go ahead and put in the epoxy. Okay, so here I've got the second one. You can see I've got a nice little stopper plug uh, formed here at the bottom. And that goes right there, nice and tight. And that'll help keep the epoxy out of the headliner as well, since I didn't pull this bracket off. All right, so I've got the holes all taped up, uh, hopefully to keep the epoxy from dripping through. And then just in case, uh, I've got this paper down here to catch any drips. So here you can see this is where the chain plate is actually going to go, and the holes are perfectly lined up. So for this repair, I'm using JB Marine Weld. All right, so I've loaded up a syringe with the uh, JB Weld, and I'm just going to inject it in these holes. All right, so I've got the uh, epoxy in, and I'm just going to wait for it to cure. All right, so this is cured overnight, and uh, I'm just going to take this off and see what it looks like under here. All right, so I didn't get any dripping. 
of the uh, epoxy under here, so that's good. And now I'm going to go topside and see if I can drill these things out. Okay, first I'm going to snip off these straws. Okay. And then I'm going to start with a 1 8 inch drill bit, which is about the same size as the straw. So if you look at this real close, it's not a perfect arc, and so there's definitely a right way and a wrong way to put this in. Um, and so this, I think, is the right way. And there we go. Ah, I love it. Alright, that's perfect. So once the epoxy is cured, it's time to start the bedding of your chain plate. And so before you do that, uh, there's a couple things you're going to need. One is you want to get some paper, some cardboard, some kind of um, drop cloth or whatever um, so that you have kind of a work area where as things get contaminated with the um, sealant that you have a place to put them down other than on your decks because this stuff will get everywhere. So definitely have some kind of a drop cloth. Um, you're going to need some rags. and. Um, Something less linty than a washcloth would probably be better, so uh, something like a cotton t-shirt um, would be good. Definitely not something white because then you won't be able to see the dirty parts from the clean parts. Um, you're going to need some kind of a solvent to uh, clean up any spills or drops. Um, and so if you read the, uh, the instructions on the website, the 3M's website, some of their detailed information, it says not to use alcohol because it will actually soften and prevent the sealant from curing. So alcohol is a no-go, so you want to use something like acetone. Um, you're definitely going to need some gloves and probably more than one pair because, you know, if, if you're trying to put something down and then it doesn't quite work out and you end up holding your hand, it's, it's, the stuff's just going to get everywhere. And so you're probably going to be changing out gloves several times. Um, so potentially, just make sure you have more than one pair of gloves. Um, some masking tape, your 3M 4200. Um, you want some kind of you know wood dowels or um, you know a popsicle stick, tongue depressor, or even like a plastic you know picnic type knife or something like that. But something that you can smooth out edges. You might some, want something with a point um, so that you can really get in the nooks and crannies if you want to get into that kind of detail. And then you might think about wearing some safety goggles just so you don't you know get some stuff in your eye. Okay, next is. Uh a little bit of acetone. Let's prep. And then I like to also just hit up the parts that are going to be inside the deck. Okay, so now I'm ready for my uh, 4200. The other thing that you'll see online a lot is the debate between the 3M sealant products or other sealants and butyl tape. Um, so there's definitely two camps in the sailing world, the hardcore butyl tape guys <laughs> and the all others basically. Um, and so, you know, I actually posted this repair uh, after I completed it on, on one of the sailing forums 
and I got a lot of feedback about, you know, you should have used butyl tape. Um, you know, really, it's, it's a personal preference. Um, for me, Precision clearly used some kind of marine sealant, um, and so I want all my stuff to kind of look the same, you know, and the other thought is if it's good enough for the original manufacturer, I mean, it's a quality boat, um, then it's good enough for me. So, you know, this keeps everything looking the same. It uses the same methods throughout the boat. Um, and, you know, again, this is a 12 year old boat. And so this is the first repair I've had to do on it. Um, so I'm really happy with the performance of whatever the original sealant is. And I've used the 3M4200 before, and I've been pretty happy with it. So that's what I'm using on my boat. And again, that's just personal preference. Do the research, you know, talk to other folks. If you see butyl tape, you like butyl tape, and you want to try butyl tape, go for it. It's just another way of doing it. All right, so I'm not gonna lie, I did have a little misstep there. Um, so I had to clean this whole thing off and uh, just try it again. It was just getting everywhere. All right, so. Man. So now I've got the chain plate mounted and I just need to go below and uh, tighten it down. Here's the final product. I think it turned out pretty good. Um, I will say that when you tighten down the chain plate, a whole bunch of that 4200 really squeezes out. So there was a little bit of cleanup to do, but I think it turned out good.